As much as I'm a Jordan Poole stan, and would have liked to see the Warriors get more for JP in return, as I mentioned in my last video reviewing every blockbuster so far, here's why new GM Mike Dunleavy made an on-point win-now decision. As Jordan learns to sacrifice more of himself for the business, given his talent and stage presence, he could very well go on to one day be a perennial all-star in the nation's capital. I genuinely wish the kid the very best. He was far from the only issue for the Warriors in 2023 and shouldn't be viewed as the scapegoat in any way, shape, or form. In hindsight, Bob Myers may have been halfway out the door of the organization when he signed Poole to a four-year, $128 million contract the summer after winning the 2022 championship. I'm not saying it was the worst decision to give him the contract, but it's sad if those were genuinely Bob's intentions. Not re-upping Draymond and Clay to extensions when you had the chance to, while giving that aforementioned contract to Poole, put Jordan and the Warriors as a whole in an awkward position from day one. Therefore, Golden State unloading Jordan's cap space in the final years of Steph, Draymond, and Clay's careers was a move that, again, in hindsight, needed to be made. Because while Jordan Poole can be an all-star caliber player at his best, and while you're not getting back close to his type of production with CP3, it's more complicated than just that. Maybe Poole wasn't the scapegoat in the playoffs, sure he wasn't great, but let's operate under the narrative that he wasn't the scapegoat. Even still, they needed to move on. This comes down to the fact that Draymond Green is a four-time champion, and Jordan Poole is a one-time champion. Bringing back this team's most important defensive talent in free agency, unfortunately wasn't going to happen unless they shipped off Poole. JP will have some serious motivation to exert in DC, but from a warrior perspective, this move proves that Mike Dunleavy knows what he's doing in the GM's role. Because while signing Dante DiVincenzo was a great move from Myers last summer, as Dante helped out defensively, as well as with the Warriors' guard depth and overall chemistry, looking back on his other moves, and they did scream sketchy. Anthony Lamb, Come on out, you rapist! Wow. Didn't have the greatest background, yet they picked him up. Based off their reaction to not getting contracts themselves, not re-upping Thompson or Green was also a bad call. Then there was picking up Ty Jerome. That didn't work out either. Of course, I was and still am an advocate of Mac McClung being an NBA player, but that's neither here nor there in terms of today's video. This move to trade Poole was necessary to both bring back Draymond, whose relationship with Jordan was broken and he, like everyone else on this planet, couldn't change the past, and it was also necessary to maintain continuity, given Curry and even an assistant coach had some not-too-friendly altercations as well with the 24-year-old. That's not to say you trade him because of those not-too-friendly altercations. It just means that the Warrior veterans needed the team's priority. Players like Poole and even guys like Kaminga and Moody, who you could very well see traded next, were expected to be productive role players with the likes of Damian Lee, Otto Porter, GP2, and Bielitsa skipping town in 2022's free agency. While that on paper seemed like it would be just fine under the assumption that Jordan, Jonathan, and Moses would develop as players significantly, it turned out that their development was a rougher uphill road than expected, which to be fair, in hindsight, is often the case with young players. How Myers built the team for 22-23 was actually an outline for future contenders not to use when looking back on it. He had built two teams at once, with one team being the future in Wiseman, Poole, Kaminga, and Moody, and the second team being the championship-proven veterans in Steph, Clay, and Dre. The problem was, Curry, Thompson, and Green needed the complementary assistance of role players they didn't need the role players to be getting all the attention and trying to focus all the attention on just developing these role players. They needed the attention from the coaching staff themselves, and they needed the role players to just kind of be assistance to that. They needed guys with years on years of tough experience 
dealing with every bit of turbulence the NBA's had to offer. A role player like a former superstar in Chris Paul who's dealt with just that should be a much better fit than Poole, while he's not going to give you 20 plus or anything close to it anymore. And maybe Paul is washed up, but then again, with how lethal Curry, Thompson, and Green can perform at their best, maybe he doesn't need to be his prime self or anything close to it. The final Bob Myers days displays why role players are so important and also why it's so tough to be a role player. To be a role player, I think we all or most of us, even the biggest basketball junkies, assume that you can be a young developing player and a top contributor all at once to a contender. While this year's rookie champion for Denver and Christian Brown is a rare exception to that, in almost every case, role players come in the form of a player who's sacrificial egotistically and or been through multiple years of ups and downs. Poole had taken a steady trajectory to the top up until the punch, and his one down made his trajectory like a topsy-turvy roller coaster. Ideal for the media scoundrels, but devastating for Jordan's mantra. The punch itself, but more prominently, all the drama surrounding the punch, took on a life of its own. It's all in all an extremely complicated situation with many POVs in which it can be looked at from, but when it comes down to it, this is a business and someone had to go. It either had to be Poole, or it had to be a former Defensive Player of the Year and a man with four titles to his name. Losing the latter would have been too tough of a pill to swallow in terms of considering this Warrior team's basketball identity. It is at times a twisted, sick business, but it is at the end of the day, just that, a business. I'm still going to remain a Jordan Poole fan wherever he goes, but the Warriors made the right move and may be back. With their newfound cap space and all their young assets even still remaining following the JP trade, you can bet many free agents are going to be interested in playing next to the greatest big three of all time, and you can bet that Mike Dunleavy isn't done in terms of exploring the trade market. We all know about that one Chris Paul video where he gives a devastating fake laugh to Steve Kerr while playing for the Rockets. We all remember when CP3 trash-talked Steph in 2019's West Finals, and now, seeing these two team up is going to be some popcorn, regardless of how successful the 23-24 Warriors are. But let's stay on topic, at least for this specific video, and I'm desperate to know your thoughts, Dub Nation, or even if you're not a Golden State fan and just interested in this situation, did the Warriors make the right move in your opinion? 